Teacher Brett here. I wanted to come today to go over the Mach 2 beginner level lesson. So if you have gotten assigned a Mach 2 of letter P, that means you're going to be doing the beginning level lesson. It'll be similar to that letter X lesson as far as the student's concerned. Um, so your mock mentor will be playing the role of a beginning level student who's just starting out. Their English level is not going to be that great. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through that letter P lesson today um, and talk about what you should be doing on each of those sides, what you should be looking out for, and what some of the big mistakes I see as a mock class mentor are. So let's jump right in. If you haven't watched my Mach 1 video yet where I go through the letter X, I would highly recommend doing that because that's going to talk about some of the general things that we're looking for, background, lighting, all that kind of stuff. Um, so make sure you take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at the letter P lesson. If you uh, have those slides, you might want to be looking at them as we go through this. I'm not, not going to show you the slides because that's kind of VIP kids material, um, but we will kind of be going through them today. So first slide you're going to see for the letter P is that introduction slide and if you remember from the letter X video we're looking for three things number one your introduction <laughs> so you of course want to give your name you want to have it displayed in your background if you can um, that's going to definitely uh, work in your favor get your name out there ask the student their name Number two, you want to ask a rapport question. So for the beginning level, level student, we're looking at something like, how are you? How old are you? Something simple like that. And number three, introduce the topic. So just a quick today, we're going to talk about letter P. You want to make sure that you have a really good energy level. This is a young student, so you want to keep them engaged. You want a high energy level. You want to be excited. Um, you want them to want to watch you. Um, so definitely you'll want to bring all those things together. So I might do that first slide something like this. Hi, my name's Teacher Brett. What's your name? Hi, Mandy. Nice to meet you. Hmm. How old are you? I am five years old. Great job. So I've got the introduction out there. I got full sentences from the student. So if they tell you their name, um, Brett, or if they say five, have them come back and repeat a full sentence for those um, introductory sentences. And I introduced, I'm going to introduce that lesson. Today we're gonna to talk about the letter P, however you're gonna do it. Um, so those are kind of the things you're looking for in that introduction slide. Next slide you're going to see is the reward slide. You want to have some kind of a reward for the student. It needs to be something tangible. So something like I have here with my food, you can do um, pretty much anything. You can put in the, um, the teeth on a smiley face as long as you have it there so that they can see it. So it may be just be a whiteboard that you have hanging um, where you're going to draw teeth. That's fine. Um, whatever it is, you want to quickly introduce it to the student. When you do a good job, you get a tooth and do one as an example. Or when you do a good job, you get a food. And I'll put one up as an example. So I'll show them what it is. Language is simple. I'm not gonna give them a big explanation, something quick, simple. Show them what you're gonna be giving them and move on to that next slide. Next slide you're gonna see in the letter P lesson is the warm up slide. So you have a hello song. Make sure you know the hello song. There's some links that you can see it on YouTube, but basically it's going to go like this. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm fine, fine, fine. I'm fine, fine, fine. While you're singing the song, you want to stop and have the student repeat after you. I like to break it up into small sections. So I might just go, hello. Anytime I want the student to speak, I'm going to put my hand up to my ear. I'm not gonna say, can you say your turn? Extra language that you don't need. And a lot of the students are gonna copy the extra language instead of what you want them to do. So you're gonna sing through that song, have them repeat after you in small sections. Um, you know, I'm fine, fine, fine. Get them to repeat after you each line of that song. 
again, you want to be using both educational TPR and instructional TPR throughout the lesson. And what that means is that you are giving instructions using TPR. So things like, you know, can you circle, you know, I'm giving them the instructions and showing them the different movements and educational TPR. So when we get over to, you know, pig, I might be making a pig nose and I'm gonna get them to copy me. So we'll talk about that later, but get the educational and instructional TPR throughout that um, lesson as well. Next slide you're gonna see is the alphabet chant. So with the alphabet chant, we have, you know, A is for apple, a, a, a. Couple of things on this slide. Biggest mistake I see is people do not use the correct phonic sounds or the student makes a mistake, they give the wrong phonics sounds and it's not corrected. So we have A, A, B, B, not B, B, M, M, not M, M, A, uh, so those are the three sounds we're doing here, A, B, and M. So make sure you're using the correct sounds, make sure the student is giving you the correct sounds. If they're not, stop, have them repeat after you correctly. A is for apple, ah, ah, ah. I like to break this up into two sections. So A is for apple. I'll have the student repeat the first part. Ah, ah, ah. I'll have them repeat the second part. I do that for each one. Sometimes the big one, it's too much for them to repeat the whole thing. A is for apple, ah, ah, ah. It's too long for the younger students to remember. So you can break that up. You want to have props and TPR for this slide. Um, you don't necessarily have to have something for every single word, um, but I mean, if you can, great. Um, but apple, you know, if you've got an apple at the house, banana, if you've got a banana at the house, muffin, if you have pictures, um, if you don't have a prop, you can always do TPR as well. So I might just pretend oh, apple. Um, I might be a bird or a monkey. Um, make sure you're giving the student that those TPR or those props for those things as you go through. That's going to keep it engaging. Your mentor is going to like to see that. Um, so add those in as you're doing it. So I might go, you know, A is for apple. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, I'm going to have the student repeat after me. I'm going to give them a proper a TPR to demonstrate those as we go. And I'm going to make sure I'm using the correct phonic sounds. Number one thing that I see um, people make an error there. Next one, we have a big A, small A, big M, small M. The idea is we want the student to match um, the big and the small. So we want to keep our directions simple. We want to model for the uh, the the student what we're going to be doing and we want to try and get those full sentences from the student so this is the way I might do it you can choose to do it however you want um, but I might have flashcards with a big and a small a I might circle the big a and say you know I see <laughs> try that again uh, I might circle the big a and say you know what do you see and get the student to say, I see a big A. Hmm. Hmm. Small A? Hmm. <gasps> I see a small A. And I'm gonna get the student to say, I see a small A. Draw a line. I'll see if I can get the student to copy my line. So I'm modeling for the student. I'm having them copy after me each step so they can see what we're gonna do. Then I'm gonna stick to that same pattern. However I did A, I wanna do the same thing for M, same thing for B. So in this case, since I circled, I'm gonna circle the M and say, what do you see? Hopefully I can get the student to say, I see big M. If not, I'm gonna have them repeat after me. I see a big M. Hmm, where is small M? Draw a line. Get them to draw a line to the small M. Get them to say, I see small M going to do the same thing for B. What do you see? I see a big B. Where is small B? Get them to find small B, draw a line. Stick to that pattern however you set it up. Get the student to use those um, full sentences if you can. So I see is a good one or maybe you want them to do, you know, A makes the sound ah. Whatever sentence you want to have them do but just kind of stick to a pattern as you go through there. Next one you're going to see is the circling slide. So you will see um, a picture in the middle with two letters. This is the one that gets people held up and it's usually the directions. They're not sure how to introduce it to the students so they end up using lots of directions or they don't explain enough. Remember that I do, we do, you do. Okay, so I'm going to find my pattern. I'm gonna to stick to it. I'm going to show them the first example. So I'm gonna circle that mouse and say, you know, what do you see? 
I see a mouse. I'm going to get the student to repeat, I see a mouse. What letter does mouse start with? <gasps> mouse starts with M. I'm going to circle the M. Get the student to say mouse starts with M. And then I'm going to have the student circle the M. Remember, use your TPR circle, small m. Um, get them to say those full sentences as you go through. One thing that's really helpful for this slide is to have flashcards. So if I have an M and an A for the mouse, I might say to the student, you know, hmm, what letter does mouse start with? Hmm, mm, ah. Uh. <gasps> mouse starts with mmm when I'm getting them to repeat that sentence. And then I'm gonna have those same cards. So then when I um, do ant, I might give them a lot of assistance. We might do it together. Then I'm gonna back off, I'm gonna see. I might circle the bike and just say, what do you see? Hopefully they're able to give me that sentence. What letter does bike start with? I might hold up the cards to give them the visual. I'm wanting them to choose. Hopefully they're able to do it on their own. If not, you can always jump in and have them repeat after you or have them copy you drawing a line or circling or whatever you do on the screen. You can always, that's the nice thing about the young students, if they're not doing it independently, make sure you give them enough time to, to think through it. Give them a few seconds pause to make, see if they can do it. If they can't do it on their own, jump in, model for them, show them, have them repeat after you. Next slide you're gonna see is how are you? This slide, biggest problem I see is um, the, the students get confused about when you are asking them a question and when you're asking them to repeat after you. So a lot of times I will have teachers who will say, how are you? And you know the mentor or the student in this situation will just repeat, how are you? Puppet is great here. Puppet, stuffed animal, something like that is really great to be able to show um, that it's a conversation. So I often, in slides like this, will pull out my stuffed animal. How are you? I'm happy. How are you? And see if I can get the student to repeat um, for me. Again, if they can't, if they're not answering the question the way you want them to, Make sure whatever you want them to say is the last thing you say. So if they're struggling with it, I might say, how are you? I'm happy. And get them to repeat, I'm happy. I would go through each of those. We have sad, fine, happy. I would go through each of them. I might circle um, and then model for the student. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm going to use my TPR. Get the student to say, I'm sad. I'm fine. Get the student to say, I'm fine. I'm happy get the student to say I'm happy, and then I might ask them the question again, hmm, how are you? See if I can get them to give me an answer. Again, if they're not giving you an answer, have them repeat after you. Model for them. Next, uh, next slide you're gonna see is the actual P. So we have a big P, a small P. Remember, this is new material, so we want three repetitions. We want to have the student repeating P, 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 P. Watch your letter sound here, not P. Get it nice, crisp, clean sound. Make sure your student's giving you the nice, crisp, clean sound. Um, you want to definitely have, uh, you know, either a flashcard, but I prefer for the letters to do TPR. I might make a big P. I will see if I can get the student to make a big P. So, big P. Good job. <gasps> big P. I'll see if I can get them to make the big P um, with me. I might make small P, small P. See if I can get them to make the small P with me. P, P, P. Get them to repeat P, P, P. Um, you can't, you wanna make sure you point out big and small, not little, we use small, so big and small letters. You wanna make sure you point that out as you go through there. Um, and if you can get a you know, sentence again, you can try and get a sentence in there depending on your how your time is. You know, I see a big P. I see a small P. P, P, P. P, P, P. Um, get those three repetitions, get those sentences, make sure you're pointing out big and small on that slide. Next one, we have the, um, we want them to write a big P and a small P. Whiteboard is perfect here. If you have a whiteboard, you can um, have it already drawn for the student. See if I can erase this. Um, I'm going to have a whiteboard ready and it's going to look just like the screen for the student so that when I get to the screen, I can say, draw big P. 
draw big P. And I'm going to get them to draw a big P. Draw a small P. Get them to draw a small P. Very good job. Get a sentence from here. You know, P makes the sound P. Great job. And I'm moving on. <laughs> Next one you're going to see is the panda. So we have a pig, panda, and pepper. Those are the three vocabulary words for the unit. So again, for the lesson, sorry. So again, um, TPR or props here. Um, you have to have at least two props per lesson, so you want to make sure that you, you know, use a couple props here in the new vocabulary as well, um, or you can use TPR. If you use a prop, try and have a different, you know, variety. So maybe I have a panda stuffed animal, maybe I have an actual real pepper, maybe I have a picture of a pig, um, you know, maybe I've got my pig nose. <laughs> well, Oh, gosh, there goes my reward system. Oh, well. Um, so whatever you use, try and use a variety. Don't go throughout the whole thing just using printed pictures. Um, or don't go through the only use flashcards. You want to use a variety of props. Um, TPR is also going to be very important. So if you use TPR for the big P, that's great. Maybe you have a picture of a panda. Um, maybe for pepper, you're going to go pepper. <laughs> pepper. Whatever TPR you use, or maybe you're doing pig. See if you can get the student to copy you. So if I'm doing pepper, pepper. I'm going to see if I can get the student to copy me doing pepper. Give it a couple seconds. If they don't copy you, that's okay. Go ahead and move on. Um, but try and get the student to copy you there as well, doing those different things. Also, make sure you get the target sentence here. Panda starts with p. Pepper starts with p. Pig starts with p. Make sure it is the exact target sentence. If you or the student are saying the wrong thing, fix it. If the student says uh, panda start with p, have them go back. Panda starts with p. If they're saying, you know, pepper starts with p, have them go back and redo it. Pepper starts with p. Nice, crisp, clean sound. Exact target sentence. That's going to be really important. Um, and you will see that they've at, they have the question here, you know, what sound does panda start with? Panda starts with P. So make sure you get both the question and the answer in there. Do not drop the questions. I have a lot of people who just drop the questions. So instead of saying what sound does Panda start with, they will like mime it. No, don't do that. <laughs> the student has no clue what you're doing. Um, and we want to get them used to the questions and the answers. Like we talked about having a stuffed animal to show um, the different questions and answers can be helpful. So don't drop the question. Um, keep that question in there. You know, as much as you can throughout that lesson, you want to be hitting that target sentence. What sound does um, panda start with? Panda starts with p. Earlier on, when we're doing, you know, the big A and small A, you might use that sentence too. You know, what sound does A, you know, start with? Or well, that doesn't really work. <laughs> uh, earlier, what sound? What sound does mouse start with? With the mouse is in the middle. What sound does mouse start with? Mouse starts with m. Mm. Be using those target sentences every chance you get throughout the lesson. So that's going to be panda, pepper, and pig there. Next slide you're going to get to is the point and read slide. This is where we're blending the sounds. Again, whiteboard is great here. Um, if you've got uh, another whiteboard or if you can erase and write real quick, um, that works. Um, if you've got blocks, you can write on blocks with your dry erase marker. So I might write app. And this will erase, so you can reuse those. Um, and I might have the different, you know, letters here. Um, so to show the student, you know, mm, app, map. Um, so however you want to do it, have some kind of visual, though. Um, don't just circle. That's boring for the student. Try and have some kind of visual there for the student, whether it's a whiteboard, blocks, flashcards, something. You want to walk the student through BAP. So remember that I do, we do, you do model. Walk them through BAP, uh, having them repeat after you, going slowly, you know, ah. Eh, B, app, bap, bap. Have them walk through that. When you get down to map, I would suggest you see if they can do it themselves. So maybe you just hold up your, you know, app block. See if they can read it on their own with you pointing. Or if you have your whiteboard, see if, if you point to this letter, if they can make the sound. Um, if not, jump in and, and have them repeat after you. But try and get them to do things more independently um, by using those visuals to show them where you're wanting them to read and putting it together. Some people will use, you know, their hands, you know, mm, app, map. 
that works too. Give them some sort of visual to help them blend there on those slides. That's going to be the, your first half of the letter P lesson. So at this point, your mock class mentor is going to have you stop. Um, hopefully you've made that first half in 15 minutes. That's what we're looking for. Um, but either when you get to that activity time slide or if 15 minutes, if, if you get to that sooner, they'll stop you at that point. But that's going to be the first half there. Your goal is to do that in 15 minutes. Remember, have a timer, have your phone, have a kitchen timer, have something there um, so that you can be keeping track of your time. You want to be about one minute per slide. Some of those slides are going to go quicker than others, though. So I just every couple of slides, check your time, make sure you're kind of on the right track. Um, we are in Mach 2, so your timing is more important. Again, it's not the most important thing. It's you know one part of the larger picture, um, but it is going to be more important here. This is this is it. <laughs> this is your chance. Um, so if you you know lose points on timing and you lose points on you know because you didn't get to different things and you missed out on stuff, you know the you really can't lose a lot of points. <laughs> um, you you want to make sure that you know everything is um, kind of put together at this point when you get to Mach two. So make sure you've practiced it before you go in with your mentor. Tape yourself doing it. Um, have a family member, you know, pretend to be the student, you know, so you can kind of work out your timing. Um, the, the biggest thing is going to be being adjusting to the mentor that you have in front of you. Um, they're all going to do different things. Remember, they're making purposeful mistakes to see if you catch them. Um, you know, they might not respond if you're not using TPR or if they're not sure what you're trying to get them to do. Keep things simple. If you're not getting a response, you can always go back to having them repeat after you. You can try, you know, making sure that you're putting your hand up when you want them to respond. Um, those sorts of things are going to be really helpful. But Every mentor is going to be different. Every student you see is going to be different. So you have to be able to adjust, try out different things if something's not working. After your mentor goes over your feedback with you, make sure you pay attention to that. So I know you're nervous about getting to the second part. I often have people who are moving things around. They're not really listening to what I'm saying. You're missing out on the key things that the mentor is going to be telling you. You know, what is it <laughs> that you didn't do so great on and what things did you do great on? And you want to make sure that when you go to that second half, you put that into practice. So if the mentor mentions to you, hey, you didn't have me speaking in full sentences, you better make sure that you hit that in the second half. If the mentor tells you you weren't using the correct phonic sounds, you better make sure that that is a focus and a priority for you in that second half, whatever they mention. Um, I um, really find it helpful when I have uh, uh, teachers who will say to me, you know, okay, so after I give my feedback, you know, so what do I need to work on in the second half? You know, is there a couple of things? Um, if you're not sure, you know, with the mentor's feedback, what, uh, what you should focus on. You know, ask them, what, what is it that I really need to work on here in the second half? What should I focus on? See what they kind of give you as some of the bigger things to work on. You're going to jump over to the second half. You've got 10 minutes left to finish out. We have a lot of activities in this second half, so you're really going to want to push that I do, we do, you do model. So let's take a look at that first one. We have odd one out. You see a picture of a pig, a panda, and a muffin. The idea, or oh, a monkey, not a muffin, a monkey. Pig, a panda, and a monkey. The idea is to get them to you know, identify that the monkey is um, the one that doesn't belong. So I would go back to your questions and answers that the student has learned. I might circle the pig. What do you see? I see a pig. Yeah. What sound does pig start with? Remember, that was our target question. And we want them to be able to repeat the target answer. So they might be able to do it on their own at this point since you've practiced it. If not, have them repeat after you. Pig starts with p. Great job. Maybe give them some kind of a visual. You might want to, with your mouse, um, you know, write a P above the pig. That works. Or maybe you have some kind of a um, um, a picture with the pig, the panda, and the muffin, and you're going to write it. Give them a visual. Same thing with panda. I'm going to circle. What do you see? I see a panda. What sound does panda start with? Panda starts with P. Remember, making sure those target sentences are correct, making sure their phonics sounds correct. And last one, what do you see? I see a monkey. What sound does monkey start with? Monkey starts with mm. Maybe put your big M there. Maybe cross it out. No P. No P. You know, have the, maybe have the student cross it out. That's all you really need to do there. You've gotten full sentences. You've gotten them to identify the key vocabulary. Don't stress about, you know, whether they're, um, you know, <laughs> Xing the uh, monkey or anything like that. But um, kind of make sure you get those full sentences. Make sure you go over those vocabulary words. Next slide you're going to see is a pen, and we're trying to get the student to identify other P words. So have them, um, you know, teach them the word pen, 
this is a nice easy one to have a prop for you you have a pen <laughs> you've got a pen you don't need to buy it it's there pull out a pen 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 what sound does pen start with oh, pen starts with p you know get that target sentence in there again um see if the student can give you a p word themselves hmm hmm p p p starts with p get them to repeat that um, and then try and get them to find something do you see p p show them that you're looking around see if the mentor will pull something out some of them will some of them won't um, so if the mentor has something for p great if not be prepared to have three p things that aren't pig pepper panda um, so pink purple pizza be prepared to kind of give them um, those three words if they can't but keep trying to get them to give you something with a p as well as you go through there um, but the idea is this is kind of an extension slide that we get them to oh, it's so hot sorry i'm like itching and <laughs> it's hot today <laughs> uh, so see if we can get them to use the different p um, find different p words there and use that target sentence whatever they pull out get them to say you know pizza starts with p pink starts with p get them to use that target sentence the next slide is sit and stand. The idea here is to get them to say the vocabulary words that they've learned um, and whether, you know, uh, whether the word is correct. So I might circle the pig and say, you know, I see a pig, um, you know, and get the student to say, I see a pig. And we're going to stay seated. I might circle the panda and say, I see a banana. What do you see? Maybe they say, I see a panda. Oh, no banana. And stand up. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to model for the student. I'm going to motion to them to stand up. I'm going to get them to stand up. Okay, same thing for muffin and pepper. Maybe I, you know, do one correct, one wrong. If, they, if it's a wrong word, we're going to stand up. If it's a correct word, we're going to sit down. Remember, if you can get those target sentences in there, this is an easy one to throw in. I see a, you know, panda, or panda starts with p, um, is really the target sentence for this one. So if you can do, you know, panda starts with p, pig starts with p, whatever you can do here. But get those full sentences from them. Um, get them standing and sitting if you can, uh, and make sure they are they understand panda, pig, and pepper. Those three words, they know those. Next slide you're going to see is the um, letters P, B, and M. We want the student to draw the big or the small letter. So we have a big P there. Again, whiteboard's perfect here. I might have my big P. What do you see? I see a big P. Hmm, what sound does P make? P makes the sound P, whatever. Um, draw small p so i might model for them and show them me drawing small p um, same thing for b same thing for m i'm going to model i'm going to get them to draw it make sure they are speaking <laughs> something whatever sentence you can use a sentence you know panda makes the sound p or ah, p makes the sound p b makes the sound b m makes the sound m or maybe i see a big p i see a small m whatever sentence you pick stick with it have them repeat those full sentences as you go Next slide is um, P in the middle with a bunch of pictures on the outside. And the idea is to get them to say that target sentence, panda starts with P and to draw a line. Model for them one that's correct, one that's incorrect. So I might model pig, I might circle the pig. You know, what do you see? I see a pig. What sound does pig start with? Pig starts with P. Great job, draw a line. And I'm going to draw a line and have them copy me draw a line. Go over to bike or monkey, whichever one you want to do, and, ha and also model something that doesn't start with P. So what do you see? I see a monkey. What sound does monkey start with? Monkey starts with M. Mm. Good job. No P. Then we're going to see if they can do it a little bit more independently. So I might just circle the muffin, see if I can get them to do it um, on their own as we go through there. Make sure you hit pig, panda, pepper. Um, if look, Pay attention to your timing here. You want to make sure you hit at least the pig, pepper, panda, and one or two of the ones that are not P. Um, if you have time, do them all. If you don't have time, you know, and you have to pick and choose, maybe you leave out, you know, one or two. Um, but you want to make sure you get the pig, panda, pepper in there and a couple that don't, don't make the P sound. Um, but pay attention to your timing because you're almost done. If you've got lots of times, so you want to stretch it out. If you're running out of time, move quickly through it uh, the last activity slide you will see here is a picture with a panda a pig and a pepper 
we want to um, get the student speaking on this slide. So start with those questions that they already know. You know, what sound does panda start with? What do you see? Get them to answer those questions that they do know. Um, but we want to try and extend here, uh, you know, if the student's able. So questions like, you know, is the panda big or small? You know, how many peppers do you see? Um, and since these are new questions to the student, they might not be able to answer them. That's okay. Have them repeat after you. Oh, panda is big. Yeah. I see one, two, three, four, four peppers. Get them to repeat after you if they can't do it alone. What color is the pig? You know, the pig is pink. So a little bit of extension on this side, slide is good. Again, pay attention to your time. If you're running short on time, you, know, you don't have to do tons of questions, maybe just a couple. Uh, and then the last sign is our goodbye song. Again, make sure you know that goodbye song. You've gone over it. You know, goodbye, see you next time. Goodbye, see you next time. Goodbye, bye, bye. Goodbye, bye, bye. bye. Have them repeat after you each line, you know, goodbye, see you next time, if you've got time. Um, and then you're just going to say goodbye to them. Again, great thing to do here at the end. Goodbye, you did a great job today. You got one, two, three, four, five, whatever their reward is. You should have given five rewards throughout. Um, so whatever your reward system is, make sure that you've given five rewards out. Every couple of slides, give them that reward so that by the time they get to the end, they have at least five. You could do more, but at least five. You don't want to take too much of your time, so I wouldn't do more than, you know, seven or so, but um, five is a good number uh, of rewards here. So that is kind of the idea of the letter P lesson. Overall, your energy level is going to be really important. Your attitude is going to be really important. You want to be happy, fun. You want to be smiling. You want to appear like you have practiced, like you know what you're doing. You don't want to be reading directions on the slide. You don't want to be stumbling over yourself. So make sure you've practiced. Get those full sentences from the student. Make sure they're using and you're using correct phonic sounds. Make sure they're getting the target sentences. What sound does panda make? Panda makes the sound p. Oh, that was the wrong target sentence. I just gave you the wrong target sentence. What sound does panda start with? Panda starts with p. You don't want to make to say the wrong target sentences, like what makes the sound, okay? So make sure you're sticking to those exact target sentences. What I usually do, you might want to do this too, is I will put it on a post-it and stick it in the corner of my computer. What, um, what sound does blank start with? Blank starts with blank. <laughs> I'll have that on a post-it in the corner um, so that I can constantly be using that target sentence throughout. TPR both instructional and educational, meaning we're putting our hand up when we want them to speak. We're using instructional TPR. What do you see? Um, as well as educational. So we're using TPR for things like bird or pig um, or apple. So use a nice combination of the two of those throughout the lesson and make sure we're making corrections. If the student is using the wrong phonic sounds, if they're using a instead of an, um, if they are leaving off endings like start instead of starts with the sound, anything like that, you want to have them go back and correct. Make sure at this point, um, you know, you should have your background set up. Your lighting should be good. You should have headphones. You should have an external mouse that you're using. Um, those things are all going to come into play as well at the end here. Um, and then again, your timing. So you want to really pay attention to that timing as you go. Make sure you've practiced, um, you know, several times. So you've got your timing down. Um, keeping in mind that you have to adjust to the student. So anything could happen. So you can practice it a million ways one time. Um, and the student could do something in the mock class and you're like, ah, and, and it can kind of mess up your timing. So really pay attention to your timing there. I think that's everything that I wanted to make sure that I got out for you for the letter P lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you have not yet applied for a VIP kid, make sure you use my link below um, so that we can get you started and I can help you through that process. Have a great day teaching. I will see you guys soon and please like and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.